So what is Six Sigma? Six Sigma is all about processes. A process is a group of activities. The activities that make up a process are not random or ad hoc. They are related and follow an organised path. As you can see in the diagram, processes use resources that will be people, methods, materials, equipment and time. In order to achieve consistent results to the customer, processes need to be capable, and by this I mean they need as little variation and be as repeatable as possible. That is exactly where Six Sigma comes in. Six Sigma is a problem-solving methodology. It is the statistical term for a process that produces less than 3.4 defects per million, and it aims to embed quality into the process. Six Sigma was pioneered by companies like Motorola and General Electric in the 90s and has increased in popularity ever since. Before we go on, I'll quickly clear up the difference between Lean, Six Sigma and Continuous Improvement. Lean is all about identifying and reducing wastes to maximise customer value through the involvement of people. And Lean describes the result and destination of a company that is operating with little waste and high efficiency. Think of lean like being a bodybuilder with little fat and only efficient muscle. Kaizen, or continuous improvement, explains the philosophy and journey towards this lean state, striving to continuously find ways to improve, cut waste and develop towards this lean position. Six Sigma is a specialist problem-solving methodology that is focused on quality and variation reduction and is one of many tools that can be used to help get towards this lean state. Six Sigma follows a structured approach known as DMake, which I'll explain in the next module. An important note to make here is that this lean state that we're striving towards is never ending and impossible to reach. Companies like Toyota are regarded today as being among the closest companies towards this destination. But the point to make here is that every company is on a separate journey, on a sliding scale towards this destination. As long as they're moving closer towards it, they're going in the right direction. Then there is Lean Six Sigma, and this is a combination of Lean principles and Six Sigma. There is a lot of confusion within industry between all these terms, and a lot of the time people are talking about the same thing. In my opinion, the creation of these new hybrid methodologies and buzzwords was just a way for people to rebrand previous material and make themselves appear more advanced. Unfortunately, it has led to a lot of confusion, and I really don't mind what it is called, I just see Lean Six Sigma as the combination of Six Sigma methodologies with Lean principles. So what does Six Sigma mean? Well, without getting too technical, all processes have inherent variability. The same way that if you are a baker, each loaf of bread will be slightly different in appearance, size, weight, etc. If you were to measure the weight of each loaf of bread after taking a large amount of samples, the graph would end up looking something like this, with the average weight being 800 grams, but a spread of different weights. Six Sigma aims to reduce this variability to help embed quality into the process and provide consistent products or services. The reason it is called Six Sigma is because in statistics, that is how we describe how many standard deviations something is from the process average. We will explain this later, but all you need to know is that Six Sigma is when a process has much less variation. Let's look at a visual example that helps explain this idea of Six Sigma. You can apply the idea of reducing variation to almost anything, for instance to golf. A beginner is likely to hit the ball all over the place with little consistency. Some shots go too far, some come up too short, leading to difficult shots, penalties and an overall stressful round with no predictability. A beginner may have a golf swing, a process which is one sigma capable. This statistically means that within the upper and lower limits, the golf will play within these limits roughly 30% of the time, and 70% of the time, 
they'll be outside these limits. For example, if the limits are between 150 and 250 yards, this is how the results could look. A more advanced golfer with a better handicap will have a golf swing a process of roughly two sigma where 70% of tee shots are within the limits. A three sigma golfer represents a golfer with less variation hitting roughly 7% of all tee shots out of this tolerance and 93% within the limits. A four sigma process is starting to gain control and consistency with the grouping becoming tighter and the number of shots out of tolerance greatly reducing. One in every 4,300 shots is outside the tolerance with a five sigma capable process. And six sigma represents a very consistent process with little variation. A six sigma golfer would hit on average 3.4 out of every million tee shots out of the tolerance with the groupings of the shots becoming extremely tight and consistent. If you were to compare a one sigma and six sigma process, you can start to imagine the benefits this would have in real life. So what benefits would this translate to? Well, just like in this scenario, there are penalties, costs, when you are not within tolerance. In this case, that means having to hit out of a bunker, but when producing products, this translates into defects, rework costs, customer complaints, scrap, etc. The more consistent a process is, the more consistent the product or service a customer will receive, and the greater chance for long-term success. The scale goes up 6 sigma, 7 sigma, 8 sigma, but as the title of the course suggests, 6 sigma was found to be the practical level of what is currently known as world class. In 20 years time, with the rise of automation and robotics, we might well be talking about Seven Sigma. But for now, and the buzzword that was selected to title this improvement methodology was Six Sigma. Now is a good time to say many processes are not capable of becoming Six Sigma. Many manual processes and crafts have inherent variation that cannot be reduced to this level. A shop that makes handmade sweets will likely have a greater variation in their process than a large-scale manufacturer. The principle of Six Sigma is not to aim to get all processes to this level. It is the continuous pursuit towards variation reduction, wherever you may be on the sliding scale. Besides, achieving a higher level of quality with reduced variation costs a lot of time, money and experimentation. For many industries, these costs could simply outweigh the rewards. In other industries, Six Sigma is simply not good enough. If you were on an aeroplane and the pilot announced that the plane was Six Sigma capable, in other words, there is 3.4 out of every million chance the plane may crash, you would not feel at ease. The point I'm trying to make is it really does vary on each situation, but the idea is, what can we do to embed quality into a process by reducing variation? And that concludes a quick introduction into Six Sigma, where it originated from and what it means.